What's up, guys? Welcome to a new episode of the Young Nets Podcast. We're going to be covering the Chris Tanev trade. So Chris Tanev is now a member of the Dallas Stars, as you can see here. He's been traded from the Calgary Flames to Dallas. And the interesting part here is that New Jersey finds himself a part of this deal as well, as they're retaining 50% of Tanev's contract. Um, so Calgary receives a 2024 second round pick, a 2026 third round uh, pick that's con a conditional pick, and they receive a young player in Artem Gushnikov and Dallas. Um, they add Chris Tanev and Cole Brady. So before we dissect this trade, just in terms of his contract, um, Chris Tanev is on an expiring contract. He's currently being paid $4.5 million, but obviously um, with 50% retention from New Jersey, it's half of that. Uh, he's 34 years old. He's a right-handed defenseman. And in terms of his stats, well, he has one goal and 13 assists in 56 games this season. Not known for being a mobile defenseman, more of a defensive presence, but you know, he does find himself on the score sheet uh, once in a while. You know, he's um he was once a member of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, and we all thought that you know he may have ended up there because there was heated uh, conversations throughout the season that you know the Canucks wanted to reacquire him uh, since Quinn Hughes and other players uh, on that team uh, played with Tanev and he was such a staple uh, in that organization for so many years. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Even though Vancouver and Calgary brokered two deals together, uh, a third deal uh, fell through and Dallas were the front runners these last couple of days, according to reports, and they get the deal done. So uh, what are your thoughts, Zach, and, uh, on this trade initially? I think Calgary did their job here. Um, Calgary getting a, a second round pick, um, more of a C level prospect, and the conditional third round pick. Just the, the two draft picks alone is a, is a pretty nice haul for um, a 34 year old defenseman in Chris Tanev who's on an expiring contract. Uh, listen, he uh, there were a lot of rumors saying he maybe was going to fetch a first round pick. There are actually rumors. Uh, today, if you're on the on the Twitter board saying he was going to fetch uh, a first round pick, I just didn't see that as very plausible for um, a guy like him. He's a good player, but it's his age on an expiring contract. Um, not a lot of teams were going to be willing to take that risk, I imagine. But uh, the Calgary Flames get a nice, a very nice haul for Chris Tanev. And from uh, Alice's point of view. They've been in the market for a defenseman. There's been Jacob Chikrin's name that's been swirling around as a potential um, candidate for them. Um, I don't know how much valid validity, validity that had. There were a couple of other top four names mentioned. And they acquire a guy in Chris Tanev. You showed on the screen if you we look at Jay Fresh's analysis of the player here. He is basically saying he is a good, he's great in his own end. He's good at transitioning. And he's a shutdown defenseman. He he's a good top four player, but do I see him as a fit with? Um, w will he mesh well with the decor in Dallas? I don't know. I don't know if he is a if he is a player that is going to take them, help them take them uh, over the hump, and uh, go for a deep playoff run, or you know somebody who's going to elevate. This group, you have Ezra Lindell and Ryan Suter as examples who are already two shutdown defensemen. You're bringing in a third shutdown defenseman. When I when I think their need was getting a guy, another guy who's a, a puck mover, they're relying a lot on 22 uh, year old Thomas Harley, and obviously their number one defenseman Miro Heiskanen for those kind of duties. Um, but they they acquire Chris Tanev, who's going to come and fill in a spot on the right side. I'm assuming he'll be um, filling in for for Joel Hanley, who probably a seventh defenseman or, or be sent down to the minors. But I just don't think it's a move uh, that fills their need at the defenseman position in terms of the role uh, of getting a guy who is more offensively minded, maybe some, someone who is who's more of a prolific puck mover. So um, I like it a lot more from, uh, from Calgary's uh, side of things. 
Yeah, and you know, just looking at the Dallas Stars as a whole, you know, they're one of the best offensive teams. You know, sixth in terms of goals, eleventh in power play, shooting percentages is third. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, in terms of their offense, there was really nothing else to really improve on. And in terms of their defense, sure, the penalty kill is seventh in the league, but for go uh, goals allowed, they're tied for fourteen. So obviously, um, they could have improved a little bit on that aspect. So. What they do is that they add a defensive defenseman in Chris Tanev. And in terms of the third round pick, the, uh, the condition to that is that if the Stars advance to the 2024 Stanley Cup final, um, Calgary receives the 2026 third round pick. If that doesn't happen, there's no conditional pick that goes their way. So in terms of, you know, Chris Tanev right here, he was a first pairing defenseman with Calgary uh, playing alongside Noah Hannafin, who's another guy that's been linked to a lot of um, trade chatter. Uh, you know, look, just in terms of looking the first penalty kill unit, Chris Tanev, you know, this is exactly what he's known for, for blocking shots, being very defensive, uh, you know, playing it simple and essentially, you know, being on the ice in terms of the penalty kill. You know, he's a penalty kill guy and he's going to be playing first unit, you know, minutes with the Dallas Stars. There's no doubt about it. Um, this is a guy that's very physical as well. Um, you know, even though if he wasn't, you know, drafted, you know, he's very, he's been a very service, serviceable defenseman for over a decade now. So, you know, this is a guy that has been uh, to the playoffs as well. So, you know, he has experience on that end. And, you know, being 34 years old, he has yet to win a Stanley Cup. So going at the Dallas Stars gives him that opportunity to potentially get uh, that Stanley Cup. Um, in terms of the prospects, Artem uh, Gushnikov, um, you know, second round pick, 48 overall in 2021, currently in the AHL, putting up, you know, pretty underwhelming uh numbers but again he is a defenseman so you know that's something you know that's going to grow with time and you know with the calgary flames moving out a lot of defensemen um it, it's only normal that they're um adding a lot of defensemen as well you know in the lindholm trade they added two defensive prospects now they're adding a third one so they're gearing up knowing that a lot of defensemen are on their way out uh, zadorov was the first one now it's tanev and I think the next one is going to be Noah Hannafin uh, with the way that, you know, things are shaping out, um, you know, and in terms of Cole Brady, um, what they get in him, uh, it's not working, but uh, yeah. So in terms of Cole, Cole Brady, fifth, he's, he's a, yes, he's a fifth round pick from 2019. Um, he's a 23 year old netminder who's, spent uh, the past couple of years at the University of Massachusetts as is yet to sign his um, entry level NHL deal. Yeah. Thank you for adding that. And uh, yeah, so essentially that's what everyone gets in terms of this trade. Um, you know, Calgary is just a couple of um, points out of a playoff spot. They're not completely out of it. Uh, they have 63 points in 59 games. Um, Nashville has 68 points in 60 games. So uh, they're about five points out of a playoff race. And, you know, uh, the Kings have 68 points as well. So, you know, they could still make uh, the playoffs. But, I mean, if they're slowly liquidating players from their roster, I think they're slimming their chances. But, again, you know, Tanev, who is a UFA, and you're getting this type of offer – it's a no-brainer. You're going to have to accept it, in my opinion. So uh, I think Calgary does a, a good job by, um, you know, being a, let's say, a um, a seller, but, you know, selling off pieces that they know will not come back during the offseason, meaning UFAs. So I think they went in terms of that. And Dallas adds uh, a player who solidifies their defensive core, knowing that they're one of the top teams in the league and they're going to want to go on a huge playoff run. So I think everyone gets what they want. And, uh, you know, New Jersey brokers, uh, you know, in terms of 50% uh, ret uh, retention on Tanev's contract. So I think that works as well. And they get a pick out of it too. Yeah, well, like from, you touched on it from Dallas's perspective, they're getting a guy who's just basically a specialist on the penalty kill. He's a top four defenseman, but he's, uh, known for his work on the penalty kill as well. Maybe they think they improve in that area. 
just overall, I don't, I don't buy it as a move that's going to really elevate Dallas's team. I think they wasted uh, uh, at least a second round pick here to to acquire Chris Tanev. Calgary should be uh, very happy, and this kind of sets the market for um, for future defenseman uh, moves um, in this trade deadline window coming up very shortly. Maybe for Noah Hannafin, it's uh, it gives Calgary um, their general manager a lot more clarity on, on what um, their fair asking price could be. So I just think it's a move that is going to set the market for for defensemen and you know Chris uh, Chris Tanev is if we look at um, if you pull up Dallas the Dallas Stars cap situation um, if you look at their their salary cap situation. I highly doubt Tana would be a guy that they re-sign in the in the offseason. So this we're just gonna confirm it now. I mean, I mean, I I, I agree. Um, because you know, with Duchesne playing the way that he's been playing and having such great chemistry on that team, uh and, you know, he's only signed to a one year deal, right? So they're gonna have to lock him up for a couple more years. Um, so essentially, you know, that's gonna be their priority. Um, yeah. also, uh, we don't know what's going to go on with Joe Pavelski. Will he retire after this year? If he does, then that, you know, clears up some cap space as well. Um, you know, Craig Smith, I don't see him returning. Um, you know, with Stan Coven being called up and, you know, having an immediate impact already, it's, you know, their, 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 their next couple of months is becoming a little bit more clear but right now it's not about yeah. the future it's about the present and they're trying to go on a run here so um we'll see what happens but as of right now uh you could see tanev was just added to dallas's uh you know uh, roster and also to cap friendly here so he's being paid uh 1.125 million uh since um there's a retention involved in this deal and in, on ter in terms of on my end, I'm just going to end it off with a statement uh, from Jim Neal uh, concerning the time of trade. So he says that we are fortunate to have the opportunity to add a player of Chris's caliber to our team. He's a proven defenseman with postseason experience, like I mentioned before, uh, that is comfortable in all situations on the ice. Uh, Chris is one of the best penalty killers in the NHL and a tremendous asset to our special teams play. So essentially, what I was alluding to before that he's a guy that's known for his defensive game and you know, they're going to add this guy because he's so such a great um, and consistent player uh, in terms of special units, uh, particularly uh, the penalty kill. So, yeah. Do you have anything else to add in terms of this uh, trade breakdown? Uh, no, I think we covered it. And if we look, we're looking at the defenseman cap hits here, they still have Ryan Suter to sign to another um, year uh, beyond this season, and Ezra Lindell, the same thing. Um, just looking at how they're allocating their money to the defensemen, I'd highly doubt that Chris Tanev would be coming back, especially if he would be getting more money from uh, teams hitting the, the yeah. market. But like we said, Dallas is is playing for the for the the current and. Uh, they're, they're planning on going on a, a nice playoff run, so they believe that this move is going to uh, point them in that direction. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so thank you guys for watching this episode. We'd like to hear from the Dallas fans, fan, uh, fan base. Uh, what are your thoughts on this trade, the Calgary Flames? Uh, do you guys still think you can make the playoffs, even though you just traded a key player, a player in Chris Tanev? Uh, what are your thoughts on this deal as well? New Jersey fans, we'd like to hear your thoughts on this deal as well, since you were, um, you know, minor uh, players in this deal. But, you know, it's, it's a three-trade uh, um uh, it's a three-team trade at the end of the day, so I'd like to hear from all three fan bases and uh, any other NHL uh, fan as well. Um, we'd like to hear your thoughts on this trade overall. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Young Men's Podcast.